Shaggers, legends, how the hell are we? It is now time for Premier League Game Week 11 predictions, baby. I'm super bunged up. My nose is non-existent. My sinuses are killing me, but we have got this. Let's get straight into it, shall we? The big one at 12.30 on Saturday. You're excited. I, I don't want to point at me. I'm excited. Fulham versus Manchester United. The time is now. It is time for Fulham to finish off Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag. What a pathetic little freak of a bold man. I can't stand him. I cannot stand his guts, to be honest with you, mate. A huge 3-1 victory for Fulham over Ipswich in the Cup. Some intensity from Fulham. Finally, finally, let's go. Let's get some revenge on Manchester United off the back of last season, I think we should have beaten them in all three games in which we met them in. That cup quarter final, mate. That cup quarter final last season. It's now time to get revenge for that. I don't think Fulham have beaten Manchester United in the league since, what, 2009? It's long overdue. It's long overdue. United are finished. United are officially washed. They aren't the elite club that they think that they are. They are a club that is living off of their past. It is a pure fall from grace. Ten Hag, out. Everyone, out. Glazers, out. Roof, out. Oh, the roof's leaking. Ten Hag. I'm done with him. He's an arrogant, bald annoyance, to be honest with you. If you think about Sir Alex all those years ago, Sir Alex was annoying and somewhat arrogant and very moody, but he had the results to back it up, whereas he's just so stubborn, Ten Hag. And he, it's not even good chat. He's just a weirdo. Fulham are going to get him sacked, and it will end 2-1 at Craven Cottage. Up the Fulham, right, straight over to the other side of West London, Brentford versus West Ham. I was impressed with, 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 with Brentford in their 2-0 victory over Chelsea. They're playing a West Ham team who have had a bit of a bit of a dip in form in the league, but smashed Arsenal 3-1 in the League Cup. They'll be, they'll be coming into this with confidence, mate. Kudus is looking like a baller. What a goal that was at the London Stadium, mate. It's time for Moises. Turn that heat back up, baby, and get that frying pan out. I'm actually back in West Ham to win. 2-1 in West London, Burnley versus Crystal Palace, the game that everyone will no doubt be skipping on Match of the Day. Um, if you're watching this game on Match of the Day, get a life. Um, that's that's the one thing I can say. Even if you're a Burnley versus Crystal Palace fan, why does anyone want to go to this game? Seriously, the game, it has nothing. Palace are hopeless at the moment and Burnley aren't much better. So Burnley won't survive this season, I say it every single time. If Vincent Company wants to win some games and get some important points on the board, maybe get rid of the suit and cap combo. It's not working. I think it's a curse. And that is why Burnley versus Crystal Palace will end 0-0 at Turf Moor. Everton versus Brighton straight up to Goodison Park. Well done. To Everton for beating West Ham last weekend. Dominic Calvert Lewin, phenomenal finish by him. I think they can pick up points against Brighton, to be honest. I was I was pretty underwhelmed when Fulham met Brighton last weekend. Didn't have a main focal point. Yes, Evan Ferguson scored, but off the back of that opening goal, didn't really do too much, didn't really penetrate that Fulham back line. It might be burnout from the Europa League. It's a real thing, trust me. Everton, you're gonna you're gonna love this, right? Evertonians. Everton will beat Brighton two one because it's always one way or the other with Brighton this season. I know they have more fixtures because of being in Europe, but they're either gonna smash teams four 0 or get smashed by a high scoreline or lose two one to Everton. Not exactly a high scoreline, right? Man City versus Bournemouth straight up to the Etihad. Then make bloodbath. I tell you, bloodbath. Man City ripped Man United apart. Last weekend, didn't even feel like a derby. Felt like an exhibition. It's like they're over on in the States for pre-season. Man United couldn't be bothered. Bill Bournemouth picked up their first one of the season last weekend. Congratulations to them. The opening goal was an absolute banger. City and Pep, they're going to destroy them though. They're going to rip them apart because their defence will be absolutely useless. Mark my words when I say that, mate. Useless. Harlem might score five. Haaland might actually score five in one game. That, that, that is my hot take. If I was a betting man, which I am, I would... Uh, do you know what? I'm actually going to back it. I'm going to put a fiver on. Haaland to score three goals and...
and get this, Haaland score three goals, no, five goals, Haaland score five goals, and Man City to win 7 0. 7 0, genuinely. Haaland, five goals, Man City to win 7 0. I'm going to put a fiver on it. If I'm a millionaire this time next week, I'll give £100 out to the first person that comments. Legend. Right. Sheffield United. I was rambling then. Sheffield United versus Wolves. Sheffield United got slapped again at the weekend, mate. It's just difficult viewing. It's such difficult viewing. Slapped 5-0 by Arsenal. What's the point of coming up if you're just going to perform like this? It's diabolical. I'm so sick to death of teams coming up and doing absolutely nothing. It's like Fulham a couple of years ago. It's like Fulham. All right, two, two years. and well, It wasn't two years on the trot because we got relegated. What was it? 2018. And then, uh, and then 2020, 21 season, where it was the COVID season, so it didn't really actually count. All they do is just look like a championship team. And I feel sorry for Paul Heckingbottom to having to deal with this. He's been dealt with such a bad hand. I really feel sorry for him. Wolves starting to gain some momentum and structure under Gary O'Neill. And I, do you know what? I actually think they should win this. No problem at all. No problem at all. Should be a simple walk in the park. Picked up some vital points over the last, what, four games. Beating City. Beat, drawing to Villa. Beating Bournemouth. Drawing to Newcastle last weekend as well. Wolves are starting to actually take shape. I believe that Pedro Neto is actually out after pulling up last weekend, which could be a mega, mega miss for them. Wolves! Premier League prediction this weekend is going to be a 2-0 victory at Bramwell Lane. Right, the big one at St. James's Park. Newcastle versus Arsenal. What a game that we could potentially, and I think we'll be treated to up at St. James's Park. Both teams are looking solid. Looking solid this season. No doubt that they will both be in the top four come May. Newcastle picked up their first win last night at Old Trafford since 2013. It's not hard because... United are absolutely useless. I think that's their first league win, I should say, because they might have actually beaten them in the cup. Arsenal slapped, slapped Sheffield United, like we said last week. Then lost to West Ham in the cup. But I actually think Arsenal going out in the cup is a good thing. Why? I don't think they really care. Yes, they probably do care about silverware, but they really care about the Carabao Cup. Less fixtures, it means that they can put their focus in on the Premier League because that's what they want to win. It's been 20 years since the Invincibles, and that's exactly what they want to win. Newcastle's injury list... Is a bit worrying, but they have some proper quality in there, mate. I'm a bit worried about Bakaya Saki and the amount of games that he's going to be playing. It could potentially have an impact on him. And I can just envisage, envisage that he'll be out for the Euros. It'll, 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 something will break or something will tear in March. I don't want it to happen, but it's always, it's always a likelihood. And I don't want it to happen, but we've just got to be realistic. I think the guy is being overworked. Newcastle versus Arsenal will end in a 2-2 draw. Right on to Sunday, then Newcastle. Nope. You're fatigued. Nottingham Forest versus Aston Villa, mate. Forest, a really weird team. You never know what you're going to get with them. You don't know if they're going to turn up or get absolutely humped. They're nailed on to finish 15th. Them and Fulham are 15th and 16th in the table. Villa, mate, they're on fire under Unai Emery. I know their form at home is astonishing. Astonishing, mate. What a job that man has done. Luis is on fire. Watkins is shining. He has to be on that plane to Germany next summer for the Euros. Villa are a team that are going to put pressure on the top five this season. Imagine if they got into the top four. It would be nuts. Nottingham Forest aren't going to score. The Chris Woods will try and put a lot of pressure on the Aston Villa back line. Villa will win 2-0 away from home. And on to... Have I missed something? Nah, 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 I ain't missed anything, have I? Luton versus... Oh, I miss Luton versus Liverpool. Luton versus Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, uh, are they dark horses? They're not even dark horses. But people are saying, like, Liverpool are creeping. Liverpool are creeping like they're some sort of uh, mid-table team. Liverpool are going to put pressure. I think it's going to be a three-horse race, the Premier League title, between both Arsenal... Both? Uh, both... Uh, uh, between... The three teams of Arsenal, Man City and Liverpool. Um, <clears throat> I think it's going to go right down to the wire, to be honest with you, mate. I'm loving Darwin Nunez. He's been on fire at the moment. Scored midweek against Bournemouth as well. What a banger it was. Bit of a sketchy touch, but listen, it doesn't matter. The ball went in the back of the net. Luton are actually picking up some vital points, to be honest with you, mate. And fair play to them. I was someone that actually slagged off Luton when they got promoted. I was someone that slagged off Luton 
uh, during the season as well. They may be 18, but they're taking, keep on picking up some vital draws and whatnot. Yeah, to be fair, the pack's starting to really pull away. Luton in 18th. 17th is Bournemouth, ahead by one point. And Forrester, five points clear of the relegation zone in 16th. Mate, it's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight, but expect some upsets. Liverpool, I am predicting they will win 4-0 away from home. And finally, Monday night, people. Spurs versus Chelsea. Um, if Spurs don't rip Chelsea apart, I'll be shook. Hopefully, the Pochettino factor doesn't play a massive role in Spurs' downfall. Um, comfortable 2-1 victory away at Palace last weekend. So many people were rattled by Big Ange, and I love it. The bloke's absolutely class. Just because he says, mate a couple of times in some interviews. Ange Boy is a beautiful watch as a neutral. I love watching Spurs. Um, they're going to put pressure on a lot of teams this year. I know they're top of the table right now, but it would be quite mental if Spurs actually went up and won the title. If they can show that resilience and keep up this form throughout the season. They'll need to sign a striker in January. We all know that. But if they can do that and put, put the heat on Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal, what a season that we're going to have. Chelsea, do you know what? I don't think... I don't think Chelsea will be able to switch on away at Spurs. Cole Palmer will cause a lot of issues, and he's by far the best player right now, but I can't see him scoring away at Spurs. That is why Spurs will win 2-0 away at Chelsea. Please remember, if you're new here, mate, do us a massive solid and subscribe just down below and let me know your predictions in the comment section. I'll be back in the normal setup next week because, yeah, we're Champions League, but it's going to be absolutely fine, and I'll be less bunged up. Cheerio.